This video is about finaling a model in Sculptress. It's not about learning how Sculptress works in terms of tools. For that, you can go to the Pixelogic website or to YouTube. There's plenty of videos about how to sculpt. What we're interested in doing is taking a student model that still needs some work and try to figure out what are the problems and what can be done to improve them. The idea is these are common problems that a lot of people might make and hopefully you can gain some insight from it to help with your work. One of the things we need to do when we open up a model by somebody else is check what does it look like and how does it work. The number of triangles in the model is about 200,000. That's okay for my computer. It might be a bit much for a laptop. If we turn on the wireframe, we can see that there's some areas with quite high density. There's a lot of detail. And also the symmetry is on, so that's good. One of the most common problems is that students will create areas where polygons are folding in on themselves. You can see there's quite a few of these around the, the detail, which looks fine from far away, but uh, you know you can't really have polygons which are facing inwards into the model because you can't paint on those. Uh, the computer can accept them, but they're not going to create a nice result later down the line. Uh, here's another one, and in the air it's a little crunchy there too. That's not too bad. If you turn on W again, you see that the density of the wireframe is pretty high there. Now Sculptress has a pretty nice little tool which is um, a reduce brush. You can reduce the whole model and you can subdivide the whole model but reduce brush lets you brush an area that you want to reduce the polygons for. So we'll just do that here. Along with that you can hold down shift to smooth the model and that just helps to make sure that those polygons we're trying to reduce are exposed a little bit more. It's more even relative to what's around it. We could actually take a lot more detail out of there altogether. Okay, uh, this, let's just do this area too. We'll just reduce it down a little bit. So the form stays much the same, but there's not quite a crunch there. Uh, one of the reasons this happens is because a student or the new user will do something like this. They'll brush up, and then over here they'll brush up again. Something like that. Then maybe they'll pinch it together. And then they're likely to try something like this, inflate. Uh, inflate will just blow up the model. You can imagine, for example, your fingers being inflated. They would start to bump into each other. And there's nothing in the 3D land which will stop this from going right through itself. Uh, one way to fix it up is just to smooth the area, which is what we're going to do here. I'll take out the, the lump on the neck that I made. Alright, so we need to smooth this out, and uh, you can see the brush shape there. We, if we press space, we can change the size of the brush down a bit, uh, so we don't over smooth it. Shift to smooth. Now, sometimes Sculptress is pretty resistant to losing these little cracks, and uh, one way you can kind of force your hand, or force its hand, is to just reduce the area down. There's a lot of little triangles there, so I'll press Y and tap away at it, and that looks fine. Back to Shift. So we can leave Y as active. I'm just going to reduce the brush size a bit. There we go. Obviously, not every model will require this. So that's a nasty one. But shift and smooth, well, shift is smooth. Shift and reduce will clear that out after a bit of tapping away. Okay, uh, da -da -da -da, moving along, just carrying it down quickly. Uh, we're in symmetry mode, so both sides should have been handled equally. That was a lot prettier. So let's um, create a bigger brush and just maybe tap away at a lot of this stuff. All right, um, middle mouse scroll will zoom out. All right, that's the blotch on the neck that I made. Let me get rid of that. Okay, so that's dropped out about twenty thousand polygons. 
Uh, let's look up in the neck down here. So it's pretty dense. Up in the air, sorry, up in the air. Oh, uh, it's pretty dense up there. It looks like we're already decimating it. Um, but in the overall size of the model, it's not a very big area. Alright, the eye cavity here is a bit lumpy. We'll deal with all that kind of concern later. Let's just look for other possible errors. Alright, so it's not too bad. It's clean except for that um, area which we spotted, I think. Possibly down here on the feet. I haven't really looked there yet. The student has attempted to sculpt something there, but you know, it's rather, rather lumpy looking, and also the feet wouldn't really sit flat on the ground. That's one of the features of sculptures which is a bit hard to deal with, is figuring out uh, what will be the flat ground plane. One way you can figure it out is if when you rotate the view, which is just uh, left clicking into the empty space, if you hold down shift and drag, uh, Z, sorry, it'll uh, jump you to the nearest front view. You can then globally move the character by dragging on it, not in the empty space. And that'll let you, um, you know, you could line up the feet to the line there, you turn off grab, and you know this is not going to work very well in a fast way, but uh, you can flatten things out. But you have to look around the whole character and make some design choices on what you want to actually do with the feet. Uh, it's a little bit. You can see on the side it looks like it's kind of tilted up. Anywho. Um, Let's take a look back at our notes. Um, symmetry is fine, pinching we've got rid of. Triangle count is still a bit high and density is still a bit high. Um, we see that there are some areas where there's very little density. They look like they haven't really been touched on at all. And there's some areas which are quite high density, like around here, without really having any strong feature. Like there's no detail there. Um, let's size it down a bit. You can see that if we smash into this, we're reducing out quite a lot of detail without really changing the shape at all. This is a good aim. You really want to spend a bit of time doing that. Some people would probably prefer to reduce polygons with the wireframe showing. Others would want to see the final result. Okay, now this little feature here is uh, one of the students particularly liked and we're not going to really play with that. Um, we'll, try, we'll try to improve the mouth and we'll try to you know, make sense of this area here. Maybe fix up the arm so it looks a little less weird. Okay, one of the one of the common faults with um, brushwork is that the student or the the new user will tend to work to one view, and if you zoom this around, although they have um, they have worked all the way around, you can see there's a like, kind of change in style here. It doesn't really match to what they've got on the front. So it's quite important to have the time and patience to fix this kind of thing up. So let's do that now very quickly. Um, use the same tools you use to model it, so it's just a matter of being aware of the problem rather than how to do it. Um, probably there should be a crease through here, and we'll just do an inverse crease. Then we'll smooth it out a bit and do another one. Uh, let's just do a regular crease along the top here. And this is more like a matter of patience and time than it is, oh, there's a quick fix to it, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, one of the tools we can use is draw, get your brush size right. I'm using a mouse for this by the way, if you use a pen you get a little bit better control. Um, let's try with pen. So, I don't remember what I'm doing, crease, um, zoom on in there, smooth it a little here and there, crease it again. Um, you have to be very careful what detail level you set for each tool because the draw tool might want a slightly different detail than the, the pinch tool wants and so forth. So you can see with the pen you suddenly you slow down on your work and you can have a lot more control over it. With the, with the mouse you tend to click away like crazy. And uh, you're going to fall asleep pretty quickly if I'm doing this all the way through so I'm not going to really do all of the model. And uh, you can use the grab tool, for example, just to start um, trying to, you know, create a visual evenness that might be more pleasing to look at. This is really lumpy. I 
Okay, so um, grab to start shifting the the line or the edge, and shift to smooth out the areas that are a bit bumpy. Possibly pinch to start tightening up the the edge as it goes around. Oops, spin around. And uh, you know, that's just patience and time. And if you've got a lot of patience and a lot of time, you can make this really beautiful. Uh, alrighty, so to patience and time. All right, it's not pretty at all, but it's still better than I had before. Oops. If you crease over a crease, you can kind of shift it a little bit as you're, uh, you know, raising and lowering the mouse. You can actually just slightly raise a crease just by brushing over it again. Alright, there's some really weird forms in here, but if you compare what we've got now, after just a little bit of time to what we have down here, which is what we had kind of up here before, that's you know miles and miles and miles and I should look at. I suppose a tool which we haven't really talked about is flatten, which just lets you you know smack around the area. Yucky. Um that lets you flatten off the surface and if you're kind of even more patient you can do nice things with this tool. But uh it's rather based on where the camera is facing to the um, to the model. So if you're scrubbing around to the side there, it might do weird things. Oops, there's our notes. Again, I just switched over to the mouse, so probably the, the pen would give us a better performance there. There's the pen. Right. So if you tilt it up and down and change the direction of the flat brush, just be very careful about that. Alright, so let's try doing a bit of grab. If you make the grab brush a bit bigger, it'll uh, you, you'll get there a bit faster. Make it a bit smaller now. Um, like that. All right, so sorry that it's a little mumbly. Uh, you know, I'm just demonstrating a, a single fix, which could be propagated all the way around the model. So let's look at our notes again, so we don't worry about. A quick thought on design. Well, okay, design decisions and process decisions are quite different. Design decisions is like your idea, like what am I going to paint today, and then you've got process decisions, which is like how am I going to do that. Design decisions and stuff like, okay, I want to paint a castle, and then process decisions is like, you know, how big is the gate going to be, and that kind of thing. Or even design decisions, how big is the gate going to be, and process decisions and stuff like, where's the light coming from? Alright, it's really um, tricky to do both of these together. So it's better to design first, make as many choices as you can, you know, even write them down uh, about what you're going to do. You know, you might, you might call this um, intention statement. If you can actually get in the habit of doing that on paper, then fine, that's good. Obviously, a little drawing, if you're going to do a model, a sculpting session, a little drawing can just help fuel your mind. If you don't write the ideas down, or if you don't draw the drawing, they will flutter away like butterflies, and you're going to have a harder time keeping track of what you're doing. Another thing that can happen if you don't make an intention statement is that you'll let the tool drive your idea, which is good in some ways, like for improvising, but Often the tool will want to do things which are not really that artistic or how to say not that appealing. They 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 do they do automatically some certain forms which you really want to keep your control over. And so okay, once you know what you're doing, you just have to worry about how um, the method. It's not good to be worrying about the what and the how at the same time. Okay, so improving a model. Um, a lot of the mistakes in this model are not really technical mistakes. They're more design process mistakes. For example, you know, this area around the pelvis is empty. And is that because they wanted it to be empty or because they were lazy to do anything there? 
This area here is lumpy and strangely twisted, and the fingers are a bit spaghetti-like. And is that because they wanted it that way? Well, probably not. It's more maybe they lack awareness of anatomy, or they didn't think to interrogate the shapes for interest value. All right. So unawareness of a problem is a really big one. If you you know you can't help that one. That's like if you don't know there's a problem, how can you fix it? Right? So that's the problem with um, youth and innocence and naivety. Experience will bring a lot to that, but there's always going to be an element of this in your work. And uh, you know, even for a master um, painter or sculptor, what they're not aware of is kind of visible, and that defines their style in a way, um, unconsciously. Laziness is more of a problem. If you're sitting in front of two hours of free time and you only use five minutes of it for actual sculpting because you're Facebooking or whatever, um, then you know digital distraction. The other thing is if you're not willing to analyze the work for faults, then the faults will remain. Right? Quite often you'll know there's a fault, but you're lazy to fix it. The fault is still there. Other people won't be so forgiving. Okay, unimaginative is maybe you're not thinking about what you actually want to create in a very clear way and you're just slopping in some strokes to okay I have to do a foot here rather than going well I really care what this um, foot looks like and so I'm going to do a bit of research and I'm going to find some reference pictures and I'm going to do a few a few versions to decide which one that I like and all that kind of stuff um, but still there's a couple of concepts in here like these um, diagonal stripes which are interesting ideas um, but they haven't really been perfected at all. Okay, um, also, uh, when you're new to a tool, starting to get your head around it, the tool's amazingness is often uh, contributing to the look of the artwork in the sense that you will do something like, uh, I'm just gonna, you'll do something like, oh wow, that's super cool, I'm going to keep that. You know, even it might not actually be the coolest thing. And in this example, it's definitely not. But um, sometimes the, what the tool can do overrules what you can do as uh, you know a, a, an actual creative decision um, let's just say put a crease down the leg you know if you're if you're impressed by this whether it is um, good for this artwork is another matter if you're impressed by it you're going to throw a lot of stuff in there like I think what's happened here I don't know, maybe they're trying to make a love heart um, but you know they're, they're impressed by the scratchiness and they're impressed by this weird lumpiness and they don't really think that they can improve on it because the tool has put it there for them and they don't think, well, you know, I can refine this, I can make this better, I can control it, I can make it into a, an actual love heart because, you know, a bit of thinking, a bit of experience, you learn the tools and you can control them rather than let them control the artwork. Um, I know that's a very fussy little point, but I think in this case, that's really what's driving the artwork, right? Um, the, the, inability to see what you can do to improve on it is really crucial. Um, one thing about sculptures though is that around the symmetry line you tend to get little weird um, artifacts and stuff where it pinches around that area. Oh, notice also a uh, really really key feature in this model and a lot most models I suppose um, is when you're zooming out at this level the size of the brush is larger. When you And so you know you kind of go I, I want to improve this area. I'm just going to smooth it back to what it was. I want to improve this area here. So the temptation, of course, to get more control is to zoom in. But this makes the brush smaller. So when you start doing this, you get a tighter edge than what you had up here. So it looks different, and therefore it looks wrong in a way. Um, so it's kind of a tricky one. You you got to really make sure you get your brush size correct relative to what you're trying to do. Um, okay, enough said about that. That's, that's it. Um, there we go, that's a little nicer. Obviously, you know, if you zoom and zoom and zoom, you'll start going, okay, I can make that better and better. And I think the craftsmanship of sculpting is your actual ability to work in close to the model. You've got to get the outside part right first before you really, you know, dive into the middle part. I mean, you know, to the detail part. But uh, if you're not willing to go in close to the model, and spend quite a lot of time in there, there's not really much point. You'll just, you'll just end up with Play-Doh models. You know? Just about every feature on here could be made a lot better just by zooming in and uh, trimming it up a bit. Right? I use the, the crease tool quite a lot because I like um, 
I like the edges that it creates. Like it's a good cut line kind of a tool. And I use the pinch line a lot on top of that to make the you know, to make the edges a bit sharper. I try to tidy them up and clean them up. But it's really difficult to do this fast, you know. I think for sculpting you have to have like the awareness that's what kind of time frame you're looking at to get it, to get the work done. Um it's like painting a picture. There's a certain um speed you can get up to with something like speed modeling. You're just doing the base model and you're trying to get it, you know, bulked out really quickly so then you can sculpt on it, right? I think the the thing with detailing is that and detailing in a painting too is that refinement is just a time process and you really have to be willing to commit the time. Now, nothing I'm doing here is really constructive in terms of you know, rescuing all of this work. Uh, it's just me showing a few things. Some things to look for in a model, any model, not just this one. Uh, consistent volume and edges. Uh, I think that's what we're talking about down here. If we, if we look at the edges as they come around, they're kind of um, creased here. As we go around this back here, this will fade out. Now, there's a good chance you might want that. Uh, some things like bones, for example, where you can, the form can change like this. But if you're looking at a more mechanical form or man-made form, things like cloth and fabrics and stuff, and obviously solids, they'll tend to keep a straight edge, and it will be straight all the way around. It's a bit wavy and so forth, but you know that one's a lot sharper and straighter, and it's more even than this one here, which looks good from the front view, but they've sort of lost it as they come around. So that's the first one, consistent volume, consistent edges. Okay, the next one, unsmoothed brush strokes. Let's go up uh, to look at what we had before. You can see around the mouth, they've kind of they've dr driven in a cavity for the mouth. It's not really complete in the sense that the tooth is doing something very odd there. But if you look sort of around the face there, you can see it's a little lumpy. A lot of this is like when, you when the student has constructed the eyes and they've constructed the mouth shape, they're probably brushing around here and uh, there's a little bit here as well. It's not smoothed out and it could be a lot nicer. If you kind of look at a Pixar character, for example, the forms will be very, very perfect once they've got all the nose and the features in there. They must spend quite a lot of time just tweaking the, the surface so it's absolutely perfect. Now, part, part of the way to get this um, working well is to use a large grab brush so you can influence the shape as a larger um, surface and be aware that you have to sort of tag all the way around the model, not just from one view. And not just leave it like oh boop 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 done uh, check check and check for good consistent curve going all the way around and that kind of stuff. And I may not succeed in that because I'm kind of rushing through the video and get the rest of the stuff all done. It's a little hard here to check back to what we were looking at before when we started, uh, but you know we're getting there. Okay, uh, more about brush strokes and so forth. Um, sometimes when you paint at a low resolution in an area. You get a kind of um, puckering effect, like here, and there's a little bit in the eye, and there's a little bit probably in the mouth. You get a little puckering effect, which is um, caused by the, like, the spacing of the brush and also the underlying wireframe, where you don't get quite a regular surface anymore, and you have to go back and look for those areas and uh, improve them. Uh, let's consider a way we could improve the teeth and the mouth form. Um, quite often, when I'm going to extrude out or push inwards, I'll kind of outline with the crease brush as usual for me, I mean, crease brush I like it. I'll, I'll outline those forms and uh, it helps me to figure out what I'm trying to do. And uh, you know obviously we want to really get this tooth going in there so I'm just going to push it up like, like crazy. And it'll look weird as hell uh, at first but you know we're, we're, we're going to edit over it. So. When you're um, doing this on the symmetry line, you tend to get some odd tearing effects uh, as it tries to maybe preserve its symmetry. Uh, we'll deal with those later. The first thing is, you know, you work from large to small. If you get the large correct, then the small parts are relatively easy. You have to have some sort of some sort of little checkbox in your head going, "Is that right? Is that right? Is that right?" And also, then maybe the mouth here can come out. Um, So when we pull out now, there's a bit more detail in the wireframe. It doesn't go quite as um, triangly. 
All right, so all of this um, tearing and stretching is going to have to be smoothed. You know, maybe a matter of zooming in closer. This may be a matter of adding detail to our details. And when you zoom in, um, let's just um, jump to wireframe mode. We'll go to crease mode, right? All right, um, let's go to maximum detail like that. We'll find an area to paint on. All right, when you are at a certain zoom and the maximum detail, it creates an, that as your maximum detail. If you zoom in closer, you'll see that it's more dense. So the density that you're achieving is not just a matter of detail, it's a matter of how far away you are. Now this, this matters a lot. Um, so generally speaking, as you can probably imagine, if you're working closer, you're going to get nicer, smoother curves. The problem with working closer is you, you, know, you don't want to work on a large surface change that close. Uh, generally speaking, I don't ramp up the detail really high. The reason is when this program first came out, and I was working on a laptop and so forth, it just kept crashing me. So I learned to keep it down, and that keeps a bit more stability in the computer. Plus, uh, it's harder to edit a, a high, high polygon model. Um, so, you know, we've, we've thrown in quite a lot of extra detail we don't really need. Let's do a clean up. Doesn't hurt to clean up in here also. When you're doing the cleanup, there's a good chance to check, well, do I really like that form? Is, is that what I really want? You see it's kind of lumpy around under here, um, where we've been playing with that form on the front of the tooth too. It's kind of lumpy. Um, part of it is just, you know, you need to go over the surface and kind of smooth it and c confirm it, you know. Alright, so let's deal with the chin here. It needs to be a bit more bulkier, I believe. I suppose another problem with student work is that they think of a head as being a sphere and you know they don't necessarily think of a muzzle or the, the jaw um, as being bones underlying flesh you know um, so it's good to try to follow the, that kind of uh, idea but you can see we have uh, you know rather nastily um, put together a, a deeper cavity in the mouth with uh, a better defined edge. I'm just going to inflate the cheek here, um, smooth it out a bit, and inflate it a bit more, and smooth it and inflate it. You know, I, just, I just want more bulk in that part, so smooth it out. We'll get there. All right, maybe a bit of grab and so forth would work in there nicer, but. Um, Again, it's, a, it's not the prettiest thing ever, but if you compare it to what we had before, it, it looked a lot more robust. In particular, the tooth there was uh, jutting right back into the head, which was not good at all. But just finishing off this, we're going to crease into the mouth there a bit to define, oops, to define the lip edge. And then we'll crease around the lip a little bit, not too much, and then we'll put a crease for the tooth. Yeah, this is pretty tight. You might, it might be better to sort of draw uh, using the draw tool. I don't think this bit here will really matter. Um, it's not a part that we're likely to see. I'm going to the detail down quite low. But you know, a bit of drawing over here could be nice if we just have a high amount of detail. We'll smooth it out. It's getting better. And here we're kind of um, we're dealing with gums and stuff. So it can be a bit spongier there. I'm, I'm kind of worried about the, I don't know, the sharpness of the tooth or the, the hard surface of the tooth being too thin or something like that. Grab, <laughs> grab. Um, it's a, also the tooth is probably a little could do with pinched edges and stuff. Let's um flatten it. There we go, and let's just play with the shape there. That looks cool. It doesn't really matter what's going on in the back there at all. Um, let's smooth that out a bit. We use the flatten brush to oh, right inside the mouth. Um, we'll uh, use the flatten brush to try sharpening up the tooth. I guess that'll do this. We never really see that part. Let's do this bit. There we go. That was pretty cool. It's um, you know slightly unusual.
Alright, I'll just look back to the notes to see if there's anything on the the list of things to do which is important. Um, you know, just just you know, looking at the improvement in the shape here, you can imagine propagating that to the nose, which looks weird. It's like a fruit. Um, and the eye socket here, and so, you know, the eye socket from the side looks rather bad there. Just a few things like that that you just you just want to do that all over the the, the model, and, and particularly you know, around focal points and stuff in the character design. Um, I've just hammered that. I don't really like it anyway. <laughs> Uh, this, that, that should be that feature should really be put on last. Um, whoops, I'm using the mouse again. This, this kind of thing here with a nice smooth curve is much better done with the pen. I don't know if the student used a pen or not. They have one. Uh, and then crease in there. The we I mean, need detail. I've got lots of detail, so we need to zoom in. Crease the eye up a bit. Now the eye socket is um, varies from character to character. There's no rule here, um, but the main thing is that you want to imagine or calculate the eye ball which will sit inside of this, which you probably animate later, you know, um, so that it rotates cleanly. All all that is like uh, you know, the skin for the eyelids is all subject to lots of possibility. There we go, that's a bit nicer. I'm going to flatten that here. A bit. And that bit in there. Doesn't really matter what's going on back there, as so long as it's kind of deep. Um, you know, that's a bit of work more. Um, so, small brush and all that. A drawer, bump, bump, smooth. Um, oops. Spin around the model, check for things that could be better. The shape of the curve does it look good in all the different views? You know, like, does that look good there? Does that look good come down a bit? Does that look good if we bring it in there? All that kind of stuff. This is nice and this is nice and curvy up here, but it's kind of lumpy down here. So, what can be done to improve it? Yeah, brush strokes that are that should be smoothed out, and also brush strokes that should be sharpened. Um, for example, around the just what we're talking about, around here, um, the brush strokes are pretty lumpy, and they could be a lot better. And without much work, um, we could really put in a, a few good things in there. Um, <laughs> But you know, uh, I'm I'm not going to do the whole thing. But you know, we should go all the way around. Common problem is to do the front, but forget to do the back. You know, all that kind of stuff. Um, something going wrong here. There we go. I've got a line back. Um, watch the symmetry line. Pop out any mistakes. This is the alt brush. I make the brush a little bigger than what I had on the front, just to get it done faster. Um, but everything should be. Consistent in the end from all views. Uh, you know, grab brush, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's just patience and time. That's pretty bad. Uh, but even if it's pretty bad, it's better than it was before. So, you know, let's take that into account. It's pretty easy to throw in something just to see what it looks like. Then you scrub it out and then you try it again to um, do it more cleanly and better. So, you know. I'm not going to redo that again, but just for the purposes of this video, that's fine. But the lack of features is a pretty important one to be aware of. Um, there's not much features in the arm. Uh, there's not much features on the back of the model at all. You know, imagine this is a game character and you actually see it most of the time from the back. Problem, you know. I suppose preliminary design and thinking about what you're going to do before you start is a good way to solve that problem. And uh, this student didn't really do a good preliminary design, so therefore the model is a bit shaky. Well, the model is shaky. I'm going to inflate the wrist, and then smooth it, and then inflate it, and then smooth it. There we go. It's a hard one to anticipate what to do here um, on the fly. I mean, that's my point, really. Is you 
don't really want to be making these decisions as you're doing the work. You want to sort of sit back and decide in advance what you're going to try out. Um, spin it around, look at it from different viewports and see if there's any weirdness that you can easily fix and do the easy fixes and they often, um, if you get the easy fixes done then there's a good chance that the whole thing will come together well. You can uh, easily go into this and start to refine it, get the right camera distance and the right camera view. Okay. I think you know this kind of thing where you, where you're attacking around the whole the whole model is what people often forget to do. They'll favor the front. Okay, uh, appeal. Okay, uh, hands in this particular guide are not really that. Um, I mean, the arms look, were looking really bad. They're not quite as bad now, but they're still bad. Um, I'm not saying what I'm doing here is making the model to be really great. Not at all. Um, I'm trying to just expose things for an artist to think about uh, when before they submit their work that they should try to get get it good. You know. Okay, and here we are in a you know, Windows photo preview thing. Um, you can see, you know, your own decisions about what we've done. Um, I did obliterate this thing. I was trying to keep. Uh, I just did it in a rush. Um, that's meant to be a feature, but just what what's the effect of that feature overall, right? So instead, what we did is focus on trying to improve larger forms and the feet. You can see that's kind of. I mean, this is still bad, uh, but the point is that it's flat. Um, the, we've only done one example, but the leg strap, right? all of those should really be done. Uh, we've added a strap up the legs, so a sort of pantsy feel, um, pull his belly out, and um, we've given him a love heart, which I think is what was meant to be happening here. Um, and we, sort of, we didn't really do a lot of it, we just kind of smoothed out the, the shape here so it's not so weird looking. Um, we took out some glitches in the, the folds there, that were the polygons were folding on themselves. It still could be obviously detailed up a lot more. We fixed the tooth in terms of it not really being extruded out correctly and all that. Um, we made the eye cavity a bit more strongly defined. Um, we fixed the hand, and not really fixed, but we, we sort of bulked up the hand a bit and improved the look of the arm. Uh, this is just a strange design. Okay, so that's what we already did. We dropped it down to 8,000 polygons, and you can see this is like 200,000, whatever it was. Uh, it doesn't, it actually looks like it has more detail, right? Um, so that's it. That's the video, and uh, remember our goal is not to make a beautiful model, but uh, um, features that we look for when we're finalizing a sculpt, such as um, have we smooth the surface where it should be smooth, have we sharpened or it should be sharpened, have we looked around to see if there's lack of features, have we analyzed the appeal, have we followed the decisions that we were trying to follow in the first place, I think I did, um, have we made an appropriate triangle count or polygon count, is the density distributed well, um, obviously symmetry is on, right, okay, so that's it, you know, um, thank you for watching, I suppose that is all.